Hello, Rose Buddies. Happy Tarot Tuesday. How is everyone doing? How are your weeks going? What intentions have you set for yourself? I am all a fluster. Uh, took a short little time to do a snooze right before this and woke up 15 minutes later than I wanted to. So I'm frazzled. But hello everyone for joining me anyway, despite the frazzle. Your friend just went into labor, what? They're making a person. I mean, they've been making a person, but wow, congratulations to them. I hope that that is as smooth and painless a process as possible for them. Ooh, time for, I'm gonna remind myself to hydrate. Ooh. Yum, delicious, delicious water. I'm a sucker for water with ice in it. And this has water that had ice in it that is now just very cold water. Does anyone else have any exciting news like Chris does? My friend, uh, maybe a person, probably a goblin, hopefully a puppy. Oh, I mean, puppies almost, I feel like, improve most things. Unless they're things where you're trying to be productive, I suppose. Puppies improve, but do not help the goal. Love a good soft puppy. Or a kitty cat. Part of what got me in like a gentle snoozy mood uh, was that I was watching my kitty cat Lucy groom herself and there's just this way like she like licks herself like her arm and then she gets to her paw and she like just like chews on her toes and it's I don't know it's if like a person was doing that I'd be like that's super gross but because my kitty cat was doing it it was adorable but I definitely have that thing where you um uh where it's like there's like a bacteria or something in cat poop that makes you like love your cat like un, like too much. I definitely have that. I definitely have that bacteria. Glub Glub Bub says, nothing exciting here, but my general mood has improved since last week and I will take that. You know what? These days, that's a huge, huge mungus win. So I'm very glad uh, that you have that. I would say that I'm also on the up compared to last week. So you know what? I will take that as well, even if I'm a little bit frazzled today. We are going to be doing, I don't know if this is going to be a shorter Tarot Tuesday. Um, it might be, uh, but we're going to be talking about numerology uh, in Tarot and how knowing what different numbers mean can help you uh, very easily learn what different tarot cards mean. And we'll go through a list of the numbers and look at all the different tarot cards of that number. I've organized my cards so we can easily do that. Um, and seeing if it matches up with what the book says. Um, that will be quite cool if it does. Um, but in other news, I talked about this a little bit yesterday if you were here for story time, and I've talked about it on Twitter, but my... Uh, it's really hard. To, I would definitely, if I did a, do a second printing, I would change the cover a little so you could see the title a little better. It's clearer in person, but it's really hard to get a picture or apparently video it. Um, but it's called Cozy Wisdoms, Eight Tarot Spreads for Magical Living. It is a tarot card zine or a tarot spread zine uh, that I've put together. Uh, it has three of the spreads that I have shared so that you can have them in booklet form. I've honed them a little bit. Uh, and then five totally new spreads, some of which are super simple two card spreads. I think the one with the most cards has I think six or seven uh, cards in it. I like shorter spreads like three to five. I think that has six. And the other really complicated one, that's five. Okay, yeah, so the most any of these spreads has is six cards. There are two that have six cards. Um, and then some of them are really, really simple. Oh, hey, Friday, thanks for joining. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really proud of this tarot zine. Um, I'll show you all a couple of the inside pages uh, that have some of the spreads that I've shared before. 
Um, so here we have, uh, it was called No Rain No Flowers. Um, I've called it Flowers of the Week, so it's a little clearer that this is sort of like a weekly spread, something to do on a Sunday or Monday. Oh, Chris, she just, what is she doing texting you while she's in labor? It's three kobolds in a trench coat. I somehow doubt that. I don't know. Crazier things have happened in 2020. Um, and then here are a little two card spread about your past and uh, your past and future affecting your present self. And also if you're conflicted over something, what well, your heart and your head are telling you different things, Mountain Bridge helps you a lot. Uh, and so all of the inside pages have this sort of galactic uh, gradient of color with uh, an image faded in the background. Uh, but if we have time at the end of this, I'll do one of my new spreads. There's one that I really like uh, called Candlelight. That's just a little two card spread. That's uh, just a good little pick me up. Um, so yeah, if you're excited about my tarot zine, um, these will be going up on my Etsy, Penrose Witchery, um, Thursday, I think. Well, it's October 1st, uh, at noon Pacific time, 3 Eastern, and I only have 36 of these that I'm going to be putting up for sale on Etsy, and I'm going to number them. I guess that makes them special. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you're really excited about it, I would set a reminder just to make sure that you definitely snag one. I'd hate for you to miss out. Aw, thanks, Dusty. Yeah, they're really, really pretty. I'm really proud of them. The one thing I would change is I'd probably make the text uh, white for the cover uh, so that it pops a little bit more. Um, but they're really quite pretty, and I love the little square size. Oh, can you hear the kitty meowing in the background, Chris? Meow, meow. That is Bean. She's a little tuxedo with tiny little white socks. And she is the least physically affectionate of the kitties. She doesn't always want to be pet. Sometimes she gets really snuggly moods, but usually not. Um, but she has either severe FOMO or severe separation anxiety. When I'm in this basement, she like, she, when I'm upstairs, she'll want like nothing to do with, with me. But when I go in this basement, she will meow and paw at the door, wondering what I'm doing down here. Um, forget it if Dusty's down here with me. Endless meowing. Yeah, so that is Bean, who is affectionately called Beanie Baby. Sometimes Lucy will meow too, but more often than not, it is Bean. Exactly. Why is mom somewhere else? Precisely. <laughs> well, shall we talk a bit of numerology um, and tarot? I tried to do a little bit of research into, just a very little bit, uh, into numerology in general. And I guess it's... Well, first of all, it seems extremely complex, and apparently um, to get like a proper reading, you really need someone who's kind of an expert um, at numerology. Uh, there's some basic things you can calculate yourself, but it's all sorts of calculations. Oh, Dusty says, I avoided numerology as much as possible when I first learned tarot. Uh, why was that, Dusty? Oh, hey, Latia, I'm glad you joined us. I will say just realizing how complicated it can be, it would be, it's something, yeah, exactly, super dense and obtuse. It, it's probably something I would avoid too if this chapter uh, in Intuitive Tarot hadn't introduced me to it. And this is the workbook we've been going through for Tarot Tuesdays. And it's chapter, or rather day 14 um, is, it's a short little chapter though, uh, all about learning tarot by numbers. And I guess numerology in general is this idea that um, all of life is this intricate system and that can be boiled down to its elemental parts and those parts are numbers. And the day you were born is like super significant and adding up the numbers associated with that date uh, can tell you things about yourself.
Oh my god, I think it's kind of cute. Uh, Friday. <laughs> you say you're the snack druid, but you might be the pun druid. Um, so that's numerology in general. And I started going down that rabbit hole and I was like, uh-uh, 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 too complicated. This is a tarot stream, not a numerology stream. And I'm just going to focus on the bits of numbers that I need to know. What kind of animal is crackers, Chris? Uh, so let me move some things out of the way so that we can take a look at some tarot by the numbers. Okay. So one of the exercises here is to um, go through a suit of cards. We've already gone through the suits looking at um, elements uh, that those suits represent and how they're represented in the card imagery themselves. We've gone through each card one by one and pulled on different symbols in general that speak to us. Um, now, the exercise for this chapter is to go through again um, and um, f focus on the meanings of the numbers 1 through 10 for those 1 through 10 cards uh, in each suit um, and see what those, uh, what related to those categories or words or keywords uh, you see in each card. Uh, what we're going to do today is I've stacked this so all the aces, all the twos, etc. are together. Um, and we're going to look at each of those and I'm going to tell you what that number means and we're going to kind of draw together um, what all those, those four cards have in common in terms of theme. And we'll see whether there's something to this numerology thing. Actually, I have not done this yet. I'm going to be doing this my first time with you all. Oh, Chrysicon has two ratty boys, crackers and cheese. That's very cute. It was both of them slap fighting. Our cats do that. Little slappies, little high fives. Crackers and cheese, very cute names for, for rats. Okay. So we're gonna, the aces I feel like are easy. We've talked about what the aces mean in general. And let's see, can I fit four here? Yeah. If you have your tarot cards, I encourage you to go through um, and do this with us, with your cards. Uh, Cause it's always, you don't need to familiarize yourself with my tarot cards. You want to familiarize yourself with your tarot cards. Um, Hey, Sarah Grace. Late, but I made it. Thank you for joining. Grab your tarot deck. Oh, the captioner is not working. We haven't. Oops. Hold on. Thank you so much for calling that out, uh, Kelly. Uh, I'm going to go hit a button to fix it. We fixed the captioner, hopefully. Is it captioning now? All right, good enough. Captioner is trying its best. All right, I'm actually going to stall a little bit here because I want everyone to have a moment to grab their tarot cards and start sorting out those ones and twos in those first numbers so that you can go through with us. It's a lot more fun if this is a group activity than us just watching me go through my cards. Uh, does anyone in the chat have experience with numerology before? either as its own separate thing or in relation to the tarot cards. I know Dusty commented a little bit that he had um, avoided numerology for a bit. Hi, Brittany B. Games. Thanks for joining. And thank you, Glub Glub Bub, for the hydrate remind. I don't know if I'm like really dehydrated today or, or what's going on because Water is just the world's most delicious thing. Ew, what's in my water? Is it a spider? Ew, there's a bug in my water. Dusty, there's a bug in my water. Okay, sorry. Now I'm like losing it on camera. I'm glad I didn't drink the bug. 
<laughs> he's, he's running downstairs. Dusty. There's a buggy in the water. <laughs> the stream cannot continue. <laughs> yeah, Friday, exactly. Just like spill it on the floor. I was just talking about how delicious it was. I'm so embarrassed. Maybe I just love that bug flavor. <laughs> I saw an episode of X-Files talking about numerology, so I'm not that familiar at all. Sarah Gray says, I've had it done before, but I don't know what, how to do it. <laughs> I have failed to predict bug. Mmm, bug water. Ew, bug tea is a thing? Is it just like a little tea bag full of buggies and they just steep the bugs? Or do they grind up the bugs into a powder? I know, I know, I know like in, in the United States, eating bugs isn't like a common thing, but there's other cultures where it's super normal. Yeah, Brittany B. Games also wants to know more about this bug tea. Dusty, what if I, dr I drink the bug? I could have turned into, I don't know, a fly or something. Blame whoever gave you the hydrate reminder in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Glow Glow Bub. I don't know if you heard that, but it's your fault. <laughs> I wonder where they, they came from. Maybe they were in one of the ice cubes or something. Thank you, Dusty. Okay, we have some bug-free water with some fresh ice cubes in it. I'm a little scared now. Woo! Definitely spilled water on myself. All right, well, well done, me. <laughs> I want, you know what? That bug was doing us a favor. I wanted to stall a little bit, give everyone some time to grab their tarot cards. And what gives us, that was the perfect amount of time. Just a little, a minor water crisis. Is that water not as tasty? <laughs> no, this water's extra tasty because it has the fresh ice in it. I know, I, I definitely examined the ice. Yes, Dusty in chat is mentioning, um, I am constantly asking for a fresh glass of water, especially with ice in it. Uh, and so in his wedding vows, Dusty said that he would always be there to get me water. So he has to. He's made a promise bounded by magics. The magic of love. All right. Has everyone got their tarot cards? Have you sorted your cards into numbers, grouping the aces and twos and threes, etc., up till 10? Um, we won't need the court cards. Uh, you might want the major arcana set aside. Well, we'll take a quick look at those too. Uh, because apparently you can use numerology to remember those meanings as well. <laughs> Not me. I had a crisis to deal with. True, Dusty. You can be forgiven. All right. So I have the aces all set out and we're going to go through the book. It has a little list of what the numbers mean. Aces, which are the ones, represent new beginnings, opportunity and potential. Well, that I feel like we already knew. I've talked at length about how the aces are the essence of what a suit means. And you'll also see they all have this new moon on them on my card. Uh, they're very much about beginnings. Uh, so for the Ace of Wands, uh, for example, you have a wand with a North Star on it. You have this energy, this passion, and you have the guiding force of like knowing what direction you want to go, how to focus this. And you have these grapevines that represent that passion and that direction. They are growing abundantly um, and they know what direction they want to go. Um, where how to focus that energy. Um, and so this is very much about like, maybe you're starting like a new passion project. Uh, your energies are newly being directed somewhere. Um, uh, another way, um, sorry, I maybe for folks who've been watching Tarot Tuesday for the past weeks or gosh, it's been 
probably been, it's been a while now, month and a half maybe? I don't know. Well, if you've been watching Tarot Tuesday, you're probably familiar at this point with what each of the suits represents. But if you're not, what we're basically doing is taking what these numbers mean, so this is new beginnings and opportunities and potential, and combining it with what the suit represents. So here we have pentacles, and those are issues of finance and career and wealth, material goods. Uh, wands deal with passion and energy and creativity. Um, uh, but, but, but cups can also deal with creativity, but they're very much about relationships, emotions, friendships. Um, and then swords deal with the intellect, with knowledge, with communication. Um, so the Ace of Cups, for example, you'd say, well, this is new beginnings and it deals with relationships. So this could be something like maybe a new relationship just beginning. Uh, and there you go. You combined this number, you combined it with what you know about the suit and bam, you remember what this card represents. Every time I take a sip of this water, you're going to see me examining it closely. No bugs, that's it. All right, so aces I feel like is easy. We've talked about the aces all kind of having that shared um, theme or meaning. But let's talk about the twos. All right. Oh, Latia's grabbed some cards. I chose my true black for this, which was a mistake because some of the cards look like they could be other suits. Uh-oh. Do you want to go grab, um, grab another deck? There's still time. All right. Number two. Two stands for balance, partnership, duality. So all of these... Um, all of those words have a duality to them. So a partnership is more than one thing coming together. Balance is, you could imagine like a seesaw, like two parts uh, and balancing. So I feel like we could remember that. That a two stands for balance. Uh, it stands for partnerships and duality. I can remember that. Oh, it's going to help you learn that one? Good. I'm glad, Latia. All right, so how does that link these four cards together? The Two of Pentacles here for sure deals with balance. That's a really big part of this imagery. Knowing what to hold on to, knowing what to let go, being perfectly in balance is the Two of Pentacles. And I feel like balance is also an important part of relationships. So this can speak to the Two of Cups as a relationship card. It's two things coming together. So there's that partnership. But in a happy partnership, you want balance. If you got this in reverse, there might be something out of balance with a relationship. So I feel, feel like this deals with balance and partnership. Um, and then these two cards are very much about choices. Um, the Two of Wands, uh, the wands are almost sort of like a gate. Um, so you could be choosing between two different paths or streams as depicted here. Um, but it's, this is, I think, like at least two choices. Um, whereas swords also deals with choices. Um, so, uh, but this is like two choices. You've got to pick your path quickly or you might find yourself in a situation where it's being chosen for you or it's too late to choose. Um, this, these two cards are very linked. Um, in their particular theme. But I would say, um, I'm sorry about Beanie being so meowy. Let me know if it gets too distracting. Um, and for Dusty, who's watching, I am going to challenge you to cuddle that cat. <laughs> so she stops meowing at the door. <laughs> um, I hear Dusty shifting in his chair as soon as I said that. Um, so what do we think about these twos? And what do you feel like, do you feel like you have that similar duality 
um, partnership balance theme in your two cards? Um, and do you feel like that's going to help you remember what the twos represent for you? I definitely think, yeah, there is a theme of duality in these. Checking for bags. Still just ice cubes. Why would you terrorize me like this? I guess there's nothing I can do about invisible bugs. I could have been drinking invisible bugs this whole time. Water could just be like invisible bug liquid. And if that's what water is, then one, I'm a fool. Uh, school has taught me nothing. Uh, and two, I, I suppose I accept it because I really like water and I will accept water for what it is. All right. Well, those are our twos. And I do, I definitely feel like the numerology is on point there. Um, I wonder if it just happened that... Well, I mean, we've only gone through two of the numbers, so let's see how much these are really truly aligned. But I'm curious, were the tarot cards created with numerology themes in mind? Was, is numerology derived? I think, I mean, I think there's traces of numerology in lots of ancient cultures, um, Egyptian and Chinese culture, um, at least. There could be others. Um, so I feel like some form of numerology came first. Um, I don't know. The cats have been fed to distract them. Thank you very much, Dusty Buns. Next, we're moving on to three. This one will be interesting. Number three, creativity, groups, and growth. Creativity, groups, and growth. Well, the Three of Cups is very much a community card. It has this school of fish, um, these decorative cups that's, uh, that are meant to represent like creativity and playfulness. Let me hold this up so you can see it better. So this is definitely on point. And I'd say the Three of Pentacles also is very much about groups and growth. This is three ants who are working hard together. There's teamwork and that's how they're succeeding. The Three of Swords is about backstabbing, um, which is also a community activity, especially when there's three swords stuck in your back. I suppose this could be the dark side of groups and community. Um, there is growth though. You see little bits of new growth on these sticks behind this stabbed cardinal. Um, which is that you you move on and there's new beginnings elsewhere. Um, so there's growth in that way. Oh my gosh. Friday says they saw the Three of Cups referred to as the Squad Goals card, and I love it. I also love it. <laughs> Dusty, Caesar's assassination was really a team effort. I love the Squad Goals card. That's really sweet. I'm struggling, though, with how the Three of Wands fits into this. My Three of Wands is about kind of getting a bird's eye view um, so that you can rediscover that guiding star. Um, so you have a lonely bird, so not a group, um, kind of looking out over the horizon and all of his forest. Uh, that he has dominion over, um, and he's seeing the North Star. I suppose that's part of the creative process, but that aspect of creativity are kind of tied to the suit rather than the three. Um, I, this is definitely an important step to growth, uh, but I feel like I'm stretching it a little bit there. What do you all think? Ah! <laughs> 
glub glub bub as someone named after Caesar I am a hermit <laughs> Sahana Rar says three of swords is a scary card but I tell myself it's creating potential for growth with a lot of other scary cards too yeah that's kind of how I've learned to embrace swords uh, the scariest cards in swords are warnings um, hard truths or they're reminding you that you're strong enough to move on does anyone have any thoughts on the three of wands and how it fits into creativity groups and growth It is sort I don't it's tough cuz I mean the, again the creativity I feel like it's a wands card so having to do with creativity doesn't really have to do with its number um and it, I don't think this is like a particularly aside from it again being a wands card I don't think it's like a particularly creative theme within the wands um and it feels like the opposite of groups a three reads to me as how a suit's energy is changed by adding another source of energy. Cups is like, more friends. Earth enlists more help. Swords is like, yes, more betrayal. <laughs> what does Wands think then, Dusty? Sarah Grace says, my card is energy growing from a fire. I'd written down growth in creativity and excitement, maybe. Yeah, it sounds like that's a very energetic sounding card. And I feel like, but mine is like such a solemn still card. But going back to what Dusty has said, um, and adding more another source of energy, when you are collaborating with a group on a project, um, that can be really exciting and fun and add to the process a lot. But you also kind of need to go back to remembering what is your your end goal. It gets harder to wrangle that many creatives and make sure that you actually finish a project um, and that you're all like aligned on it, that you all have um, like a, the same mission. There's a software adage, says Dusty. It takes three software developers three times as long to complete the same task as one. Latia says, so my three of wands is a diving bird going after a school of fish that's surrounded by the wands while other birds fly overhead. This bird is engaging in its creativity to get its food. See, again, that's like a really energized card. Um, but... I really like Dusty's interpretation that the three, when you talk about groups, it's like, well, how does this card's energy change when you add more people to it, more sources of energy to it? And I'm going to say what's going to help me remember the meaning of this card is that as you add more people, it becomes more and more important to remember your focus, um, to remember where you are headed so that all of you can be guided in that same direction. McCavity Kitty says the desolate imagery looks like we have more room to grow. There's that as well. There's that as well. Okay. I feel like we were able to sort through the threes and figure that out. And I really liked how Dusty interpreted those three words. Let's look at the fours now. Okay. The fours are about structure, stability, and manifestation. Structure, stability, manifestation. That's really interesting with the fours. So what I immediately hone in on are these swords and cups for me. The swords and cups are both a little bit about like stillness and your energy kind of receding. Um, the Four of Swords is very much a self-care card for my deck. It's about knowing when you need to hold still, exercise self-care, and basically hibernate. That's what this Frogo is doing. It's a hibernating Frogo on my card.
Dusty says a chair can stand on three legs, but it will still be wobbly. Four is when you get a good foundation. Oh, that's a really great way to remember. Um, the Four of Cups is about kind of meditation. Um, silence, stillness. You have these clams who are like literally clamming up. They've closed into themselves. So similar cards, although I kind of think of the Four of Swords more about like recognizing when you need self-care. The Four of Cups and like the thought of like clamming up has a little more of a negative connotation to me or at least a more of a neutral connotation. I wonder, I'm not really sure where those fall into structure, stability, and manifestation, though. Ah, what did I do with my hair? Just, like, threw it in my face. Hmm, I'm thinking. Sometimes, I guess, to achieve that good foundation... Um, you do need to take some time to yourself. So it could be about what you need for that stability. There are different ways to achieve it. And I guess I should be thinking about what the cards represent as well. So here are like your emotions and to sort of stabilize your emotions, maybe you need to meditate on them. Maybe you need that sort of peace and calm and being by yourself. I know I certainly do as an introvert. And the swords are thoughts. Um, and sometimes maybe you need to, um, gosh, like calm all of the thoughts you have going on, all of your intellectual pursuits, and take some time to just focus on just being. The Four of Pentacles and the Four of Wands are stability in very different ways. The Four of Pentacles actually warns about greed. Um, so I suppose you're stable and secure and that you have an abundance of stuff and things. Um, but I think it kind of warns that even though that might be how you want to achieve stability in terms of material goods, sometimes it can be too much. And so you're out of balance. And then the Four of Wands, I believe in most decks is sort of a, um, is the Four of Wands typically a celebration? Well, anyway, let's go back to the basics. So this is creativity and passion. Um, or actions, Dusty is saying. So this is stability and balance in structure uh, in actions. So you've got actually like a little structured tent out of these wands um, and, a, and a little cocoon that is nice and safe um, in the wands. My four of wands represents security, um, if I remember correctly, uh, based on all of this protective imagery. Latia says, my pentacles has a spider web full of many butterflies. It's lots of food, but that they may wreck the web in their struggles. Oh, yes. And like, gosh, that's too, that's too much. Many butterflies for one spider. Calm down, spider. Dusty says, security means you can take the time away from survival to create and build the things you want. Yes. So I think, again, um, that when I was looking up Four of Wands just as like a separate meaning in like tarot apps and stuff, a lot of times it's a wand of, or a wand, a card of um, a celebration and festivities. Um, whereas mine focuses on the security aspect you need to be like, stable enough that you can take time for frivolities like that. Um, but also, like Dusty said, you can be secure enough that now you can manifest your passion projects. 
Ew, butterfly water. Sahana Roar, why would you do this to us? What have we ever done to you? <laughs> clap, clap, pop. Why must I be reminded of my greatest failure? <laughs> uh. No, Dusty, don't you dare. Uh, all right, so that's structure, stability, manifestation. Do folks feel like we've got like a good grasp of the fours? I definitely see like the stability in particular, how, what you need to achieve stability in these different things or what stability allows you um, in these different suit meanings. Brittany B. Game says, my Four of Cups card is Peter, Peter Baelish giving Sansa Stark a cup under the Weirdwood tree, and the Four of Swords card is a dead knight being taken, taking care of a silent sister, which scares me a bit. Ooh. Yeah, I think, um, I don't remember if it's the Four of Cups or the Four of Swords, but I remember Friday had a deck that had, like, a pretty scary interpretation of one of those. Let's look at the fives. Oh, okay. So I'm already going to guess that fives have some sort of like conflict or loss. Conflict or loss, I'm going to guess, are keywords. Okay, not quite. Oh, well, conflict is one of them. Okay, five. Change, instability, and conflict. Change, instability, and conflict. Now this is sort of like the opposite of the four. So you kind of can see like a little thread being woven through. Oh, my cavity kitty, thank you for the hydrate. I should ch ch create a check for bugs remind as well. All right, so we have this five of cups. Um, we have this Five of Cups, which is about loss, um, but let's combine. This is instability or conflict combined with emotions and relationships. So this, I feel like that's sort of about the reaction to this loss, um, that your feelings are unstable or maybe there was a conflict of some sort. Check for the bugs behind you. Don't say that, Chris. But I also, I have a little, I have a little screen up here where I can see myself. So unless they're like vampire bugs or something and they don't show up. This one's very much about instability in, in finances and material goods. Look at those broken pentacles. This one's also about loss. These two are very much about conflicts. I know the Five of Swords, um, that this was a bit about like choosing your battles. I remember there was an anecdote about these like hornets. And the Five of Wands is very much about conflicts um and honestly also like stalemates or like nothing is going to progress unless something in this conflict changes somebody gives so i think that's spot on for five i don't know if i necessarily associate any of these with like major change i mean i know i take that back five of wands is like change has got to happen Friday says, my five of swords is a fight or flight pressure point. So that's also change. Like one of those has to happen. But I definitely say all of these have to do with conflict and instability for sure. 
Chris, I think I'm being too mean to Lisa today. Any amount of mean is too mean to Lisa. Yeah, I'm feeling like I really get the instability uh, and conflict in these fives. Um, how are everyone else's fives looking? I feel like three words for each number might be too many for me to actually remember to be useful. Um, but so far, I feel like remembering one as the essence of the suit. Um, and it in thinking of the essence of the suit, it could be like new beginnings. Um, two, there's really that duality or partnerships. Um, three is really about community. Um, and I'm going to, I'm choosing to think about the way Dusty brought up where it's like, what happens when you add community or other energies to a particular suit? Four was very much about stability, how to achieve stability, what happens when you have stability. Um, and I'm going to say five is about instability, which reminds me of conflict. Those two words are very tied. Dusty says, my five of cups is ecstasy and is a woman dancing around a bonfire. Whoa, that's really different from the Rider weight. It's like the opposite. Oh, Latia, all my fives are straight up struggle bugs. Broken cups, broken swords, broken wands, broken pentacles. Everything is broken. All right, so we can all remember like five is very much like a terrible hump day in the middle of tarot, tarot minor arcana. The, the nega hump. All right, let's look at the sixes. Here we go. Much happier. Happy cards. All of these are really happy. Yeah, five is the Wednesday of tarot. Poor five. <laughs> That's going to be our main takeaway today. Oh, Brittany, my five of cups is sadder. Circe is mourning her children in the red keep. Oh, okay. All I remember when I see the six of wands is how happy these trumpet mushrooms are for this daffodil. And it's about like celebrating and not being afraid to brag. <laughs> All right, six, communication. Well, that was very much a communication card. Cooperation and harmony. Well, I definitely feel that a lot with the Six of Wands, celebrating this daffodil's beautiful achievements of just simply being. Um, that's very much communication. Um, it's cooperation if you think of this as like not just necessarily talking about you, but um, the trumpets, mushrooms, and the daffodil being like different people. Um, although I don't think it has to be, but it's definitely... Um, a happy harmonious card. Um, the six of pentacles, you have everything in abundance. Oh, let me hold these up actually to make sure folks can see them. Here's our happy daffodil with these happy trumpets. They're like, burr, 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 daffodils are great. Um, six of pentacles, um, you have everything in abundance. There is enough to share. And like, look, there's like all these different little critters enjoying this and, and living harmoniously. These other two are a little different though. Uh, but again, I need to think of these not just in general, but it is the number applied to the suit. So this is harmony and cooperation in terms of material resources. This is harmony and cooperation in terms of passion or communication of passion, I think it could be. Um, the Six of Cups. So it's communication, cooperation, or harmony of emotions. This is a very like calm card, um, a very nostalgic card, kind of going back to um, the joy of our youth. So it's definitely, I could say it's like a harmony of emotions. 
I don't know if that's the first word I would choose, though. Chris, I'm mad at you for that joke. Tentacles. <laughs> um, and then the Six of Swords is about like a rite of passage, but also not forgetting where you came from. So that's sort of like a harmony of thoughts moving forward, uh, but also remembering the past. I'm, but I'm a little stuck on the Six of Cups and Six of Swords and how they, how they fully um, meld with this number. Transition is a key word for my six. I think of Six of Swords as being about transition and moving on, but I guess if you make a decision to move on, your thoughts have to be in harmony for that decision. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. Um, I'm going to use that for remembering mine as well, that, um, that you need to be in balance and harmonious in your thoughts um, if you've decided something that you're ready to take the next step. Um, and then also for me, it's the harmony of remembering the past as well, because it has these forget-me-nots that you need to remember where you came from. Looks like mine is too. Everyone's moving on or transitioning to something or somewhere better. So this, I think in order for the Six of Wands to be able to be blended in, I do need to remember that communication because I feel like the Six of Wands is very much about that. Um, but it's that communication and harmony. I'm still a little stuck on Six of Cups. How, how is everyone else using that those three keywords for their Six of Cups? Mm hmm. Harmony and motion in emotions equals innocence? Maybe. I mean, I don't feel like you necessarily need it to be innocence, though. But that, that well, but this card definitely has a peace and a stillness to it. Um, a peace, a calm, a... Um, like a happy stillness, not a stagnant stillness. And that is definitely harmony in emotions. Latia says, when you're young or unknowing, it's easy to feel like those things are in balance. Dusty says, my six is reunion. Dusty, you're just like coming in here, making everything extra confusing with your weird Wildwood cards. So Hannah Barnes says, maybe if Six of Cups reflects childhood memories and innocence, it's like you're more likely to feel everything is in harmony or at least be shielded from conflict during childhood in theory. Yeah, in theory, right? Um, yeah, and I guess, yeah, I guess, but with, with what you both you and Latia have said, there is the, uh, the idyllic sense of childhood that you find joy more, more easily and balance in that way more easily. Um, so I can kind of fold that in and help remember that childlike aspect as well. All right, let's look at the sevens. The trickster card, that tricksy raccoon. Okay, I have no guesses as to what these keywords are going to be, because these are like totally different cards. You have these cups where it's like this dreamy frog, maybe having like a bug dream. He would have loved my water from before. Um, making decisions as well. 
Dusty says, I might switch to a new deck for a while. I love the Wildwood Tarot, but it's completely off kilter from what everyone expects the card's meaning to be. The more you learn the traditional interpretations, the more the deck feels weird. I mean, I was mostly just kidding around, Dusty. If you love the Wildwood, if it speaks to you, if, if you're able to in intuitively interpret those cards, then don't feel like you have to switch. It's okay to love a weirdo, the weirdo Wildwood deck. It's a beautiful deck. And I love the, uh, the imagery that it uses in terms of symbols as well. Um, let's see. I totally forgot what the Seven of Wands means, except that these are carpenter bees. Um, and I remember that it was important that the carpenter bees were ultimately harmless, but they kind of get in your face. The Seven of Swords was had this raccoon and these, and these, um, these suspect mushrooms. Uh, and this was very much a card about trickery. And the Sesman of Tentacles, I rem Tentacles. No, have I been saying tentacles this whole time? Chris, or is it because Chris put it in my head? Seven of Pentacles has this spider. And I remember giving her props for this intricate web she has woven. All right. Seven. Reflection, assessment, knowledge. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So seven of cups, you definitely have to assess because you could be fantasizing um, about things. So there's you have to kind of assess your emotions here. Um, and the seven of swords, you for sure have to assess um, critically, because you could be being tricked. I totally forgot what the Seven of Wands means. But before we look it up, it's um, reflection, assessment, and knowledge combined with actions and passion. Um, so assessment with your passions. Well, I remember it's these carpenter bees and they're really into these berries. That's, I remember what the story is, but I don't know what that means for the card. I also don't know how this ties into our spider friend who's been very persistent um, at this wand, or this wand, this web that she's made. But I suppose the mastery of making a web requires an assessment of how you're using your resources and knowledge of how to best use your resources. I am, however, going to look up the Seven of Wands. See, I still have to look stuff up, but I don't know if you remember me at the beginning. I really didn't know what any of these cards meant. Um, and I feel like I'm doing a really good job of remembering this particular deck. Um, the uh, symbols as I learn them really jump out at me. So I'm really proud of myself. The Seven of Wands represents strong willpower and steadfastness. There will be times when others try to take what isn't theirs or stifle another's voice or opinion. Standing firm on beliefs and values will earn the respect of others. Don't back down and don't be afraid to use your voice. Violence doesn't have to come into play either. There are many ways to prove a point. The first step is taking a solid stance and planting your feet. Oh, right, because the carpenter bees like to like buzz all in your face when you try to take their berries. So this is kind of like telling you to be the bee. what does that mean here? So reflection and assessment of your passion. Um, so I, that kind of reminds me of the aspect where it was like, it doesn't have to be violence. There are different ways to stand your ground and, and to assert yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Sahanarar says, for wands, it makes me think of needing to make a plan in order to pursue your passion or the action you want to take and then follow through with it, which requires checking in to see if you need to make changes as you go. That is really, yeah, I think that that's super spot on. So assessing your emotions. Are you totally fantasizing? Is this, a, are you like dreaming these buggies and some of them could be a trap? Just make sure you're checking in with how you're feeling and whether emotions are are real or kind of leading you astray. Wands, make sure that you are assessing um, the actions you want to take. You're putting a plan together. If someone is trying to take what is yours or others, um, have a plan to stand your ground and know that there's lots of different options for that. Oh my god, a Seven of Cups does tell you to check your water for buggies. What she <laughs> ah, Seven of Swords. Um, assess your thoughts, your knowledge, your critical thinking. Someone might be trying to trick you. Um, so rely on your logic to suss things out. Um, and the Seven of Pentacles, um, know how to best use your resources um, and uh, what knowledge you have of your resources uh, to uh, carry through your plan. <laughs> oh my god, Latia, but they might be illusions. Then you will know someone is trying to fool you. Okay, we're moving on to eights. All right, I'm very curious what this keyword is going to be. Eight, mastery, action, accomplishment. Ooh, ooh, okay. Well, the eight of wands is very much an action action card. This is the action-y card of, the, of, of 1 to 10. If we're not including the knight, this is the most action-y looking card, I think, uh, in Wands, a suit of action and passion. It's basically like you're an unstoppable force. The Eight of Pentacles, very much a mastery card. Look at the precision of these honeycombed pentacles of these bees. These bees are hard workers and they are master little architects. I'm not sure about the Eight of Cups. If I remember correctly, this Eight of Cups is like shedding um, its past, kind of escaping and running away. I guess that's an action, an, a an action of emotions. Um, getting rid of them, running away. Hi, Graceless Sunflower. Eight of Swords is interesting. I'm not sure because, well, I think the Eight of Swords is spurring you to action because it tells you that you are in a cage of your own making. What you are afraid of, illusions, totally in your head. The Eight of Swords is very much like pushing you to, you need to take action. I'm going to look up the Eight of Cups just to get a little refresher. Oh, I turned right to the page. Transition, moving on, letting go, a difficult journey. The Eight of Cups signifies an emotional transformation, a release of something that is no longer fulfilling. It is a difficult process to leave behind something that you are so attached to, but what waits ahead and will allow for new growth and freedom. Letting go is a natural process and learning to accept it is a sign of maturity. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's totally an action card in the suit of emotions. Yeah, it's kind of, it's saying goodbye. Um, it's letting go. It's doing whatever you need to cut something out of your life that is not serving you anymore. Yeah, I think it's saying goodbye to something that's toxic in your life. 
And it recognizes that that transition could be hard. Um, but I think this actually is going to help me remember the Eight of Cups better because I'm combining that action with um, emotions or action in relationships. Latia says the Eight of Cups is the cutest dang card in this deck. It is a little BB octopus leaving the nest surrounded by all these cups. Oh, and, and that's actually like a good example um, of saying goodbye. And but it's not necessarily because of something bad. The octopus, it reminds me of the um, uh, the seven of swords. No, the six of swords, where it was a transition card. Yeah, the six of swords um, was also about transition and leaving. The, it could, you could be saying goodbye to something because you're just ready to. Brittany B. Game says, mine is Jon Snow leaving the wall. I mean, he had things to do elsewhere. All right, I'm really feeling this eight is action. I feel like I don't know if I'm going to fully remember all of these. Well, let me go through and see if I can. So one was sort of that essence, those new beginnings. Two was duality and partnerships. Three was when you're adding that like additional energy. So like community aspect to something. Four was stability. Five was instability. Six was, I believe, a sense of harmony. Seven uh was um assessing uh assessing um and reflection assessment and reflection yeah and eight was action and mastery uh, yeah latia that game of thrones deck really like draws on a lot of these really emotional scenes and aspects of the show. So if you've seen the show, that's a really great deck, actually. Usually I think of decks that use like TV show or movie properties as being almost like kitschy fun decks. But this is like a really serious deck. It's a good one. Let's look at the nines. Nine. Fruition, attainment, and fulfillment. Oh, well, of course, swords is the negative Nancy here. But here we've got this little mouse who has worked so hard to get to the berries at the top. He's about to attain some berries. Nine of cups, this fulfillment of emotion. You have these happy turtles in their perfect environment, basking in the sun. Um, that's very much an attainment of emotion, um, an attainment and fulfillment um, of your passion and action, and attainment and fulfillment of material resources. This kitty cat, um, life is so good that this kitty cat can just relax uh, and enjoy this garden, roll around in some catnip, this is what you work so hard for your material resources to achieve. Yeah, that kitty cat is goals. Oh, both of our pentacles have kitties. But then swords. So this one. So the last one I had was like spurring you to action. This one is about like being stuck in your worst nightmare. This one is about anxiety and depression. And so I don't know how this is like attainment or fulfillment of thoughts. It feels like attain like fulfillment of like the worst thoughts. Um, but if you think about like fruition, it you, it's almost like fear of the fulfillment of your worst nightmares. I do not like this card. It is very scary.
Yes, Dusty, nine is right before final fulfillment. Latia says, mine is atop a pedestal surrounded by prey animals and coins that might be biscuits. Oh, that kitty cat. My Knight of Swords is Grey Wind in his cage, and I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's a big scary centipede. It's an obstacle to overcome before we reach the 10. Okay, I don't think that that's necessarily true, except possibly for the swords. But then the swords 10 isn't something you're really, it doesn't feel like you're overcoming it either. The swords 10 is pretty, is pretty bad. But the other cards don't fully feel like obstacles. Maybe the nine of wands feels like an obstacle. It's like they're your final last effort, that sprint uh, when you see the finish line up ahead. <laughs> Dusty. Yeah, you're right. Swords are just, just nasty. I like I don't even know if this is like I don't think this one's even like spurring us to achieve some sort of positive version of the word in the that in the numerology list. I think this is just fear of your worst fears coming to fruition. Okay. The tens. For almost all of these, they're extremely... Oh, actually, no, I take that back. Half of these are extremely joyful cards. Um, so 10 is completion, end of cycle, renewal. Um, so this is like uh, the... So yeah, so the completion of this cycle, uh, the 10 is like so much harmony and love and happiness. This is the end of your cycle of emotions uh, for pentacles. Like you've achieved all of these resources and now there's going to be resources for generations and there's the strong foundation. Um, but then we get to these other cards for wands. I do see this as a warning, um, but this end of cycle is you've done so well. Good work is only rewarded by more work. And there's more and more and more and it all gets piled onto this ant and you need to make sure you are looking out for burnout, which honestly, the number of freelance creatives I know, yeah, that is kind of the, the end of the cycle, but it's a cycle. So you almost always like, if you can break out of this cycle of uh, agreeing to do too many things and burning out, um, Either way, you eventually refresh and you have this like one project that becomes your ace of wands again and you go through the cycle all over. But it's definitely a warning card for me. Oof, this ten of swords. The completion, the end of a cycle for the ten of swords is just getting stabbed and something terrible happening to you. A terrible betrayal. Oh, our decks are a bit similar in that way, too. My wands are piled onto a Hercules beetle. Latia says, well, if tarot is cyclical and we get to the terrible, terrible end of swords, the worst is over, right? And maybe it feels like the absolute most terrible thing, but at least it's done. That's true. Um, and I do feel like swords are all about, yeah, this terrible thing has happened to you, but pick yourself up. You can keep going. Um... They're just, their other suits might say similar things in nicer ways, but swords just doesn't sugarcoat anything. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I guess completion of thought, because uh, swords are thought, end of cycle of thought, renewal of thought is that, yeah, I guess that's very much the message of the worst has happened. Time to start over. Renew. Um, it's time to pick yourself back up. Keep going. Oh, no, Brittany. Mine just says traitor with 10 swords around it. Makes me worry a bit. 
Um, so I do have the stack of court cards here, but the courts don't have numbers. They're not included in numerology. What did we think of this exercise? I'm going to talk very briefly about um, how it works for the major arcana, but uh, because I have another stream uh, coming up, uh, I'm probably not going to take the time to go through uh, the major arcana for you. I will leave that as homework for you to check out if you so desire. Oh yeah, Brittany B's card is very intense. So the way that things work in the major arcana, um, you certainly have um, cards that are labeled with the single digits, one through and 10, so one through 10. Uh, but when you get higher than that, something that you can do is take the digits and add them together. So the example that the book gives is that the tower card is 16. You add one plus six, and that gives you seven, which is about assessment, reflection, and knowledge. So the tower is about everything around you, burning down, your table being flipped and having to start over. And I think that's definitely a card about, okay, everything is scattered on the ground, everything has fallen into the abyss, everything is on fire. Let's us take a moment to assess. Um, so I think that definitely works. Um, but apparently there's also double digit uh, numerology. Um, so in addition to that single digit interpretation, you can find out what a numbers higher than 10 mean. I don't have a list here, but the example they gave is the death card. Um, both death and the number, which is number 13, both death and the number 13 relate to upheaval. 13 is also a karmic debt number, a sign that we need to learn a life lesson to evolve spiritually. Uh, so you can see how the numbers and the card meanings uh, are related in that way. Um, I find that interesting because if you do the death card 13, that's one plus three, which is four, which is structure, stability, and manifestation. Um, and I definitely feel like the death card can also be a manifestation card uh, because the death of something leaves a vacuum for creation. Um, but yeah, again, I wonder whether these cards just happen to be linked to these different numbers if the numbers are broad enough that we can kind of slot things in and tell stories that help us remember no matter the meanings or if they were somehow one was created um with the other in mind i don't know but what did you all think of this exercise was it helpful for you um i think at least for one through three uh, I'll be able to easily remember and five probably. Um, I think what I, what I haven't done is written this list of numbers and their keyword meanings in my book of shadows. So I think I'm going to do that because writing things is something that really helps me learn. But I'm curious what you all thought. I think it's also helpful just having another way to look and think about the tarot cards. It just gives you also just gives you an excuse to revisit everything in a meaningful, intentional way um, so that you're just constantly looking at and working with the cards. I already think everything we've done in terms of elements and symbols um, have really helped me really connect with the symbols in this particular deck. And I had to look a few up today. There's no shame in that. Um, but I feel like I'm, I'm really doing a better job of just being able to intuitively read and be comfortable with my own readings of the cards. Dusty says numerology like this is certainly less intimidating. Is this very different from your experience when you delved into it a little bit? Brittany B says, oh yeah, it was at, it was at first, but then you go through the cards, you understand the cards, but then as you go through the cards, you understand the cards a bit more. Sarah Grace says, it has definitely helped and given me different ideas to associate with the cards. Some uh, I did struggle with, uh, but it did help. Yeah, I think it definitely did help. And for ones where it like really was 
like the keywords like really re resonated with those particular cards, it might anchor that number for me. Uh, yeah, I might kind of when I go through and I write the meanings down, I might also think about which cards, which number cards really resonated with that number meaning um, to help me remember the number meaning um, and then remember that number for other cards, if that makes sense. That seemed really rambly and convoluted. Dusty says, yeah, my first introduction was through weight. So I was sifting through a bunch of obtuse hermetic stuff. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really complicated. Uh, Sahana Roar says, same here. I liked having new ways to think about the cards. Um, so let me take a look at the next chapter and let's talk about what we're going to talk about next time. So day 15 is interpret the symbolism in the tarot. I feel like that's so unique to my deck. Um, but there's tips to how to make the most out of the symbols in your tarot cards. So I could talk a bit about that. And then there's create a library of symbols. And there's just, oh gosh, it's a long chapter, a whole a list of like a bunch of common symbols that show up. Um, and then talking about personalizing symbols and using them in tarot readings. So I feel like that could be pretty interesting. Later, it's interpret stories in the cards. and meditation with tarot. So those are the chapters coming up. So I'm thinking for next time, would folks be interested in if I taught if I reviewed the advice in this chapter, um, and then we, I can either try to find common symbols in this deck, although this deck is very like it focuses specifically on animals and botanicals. Um, but I do have a lot of other tarot decks, um, some in the Rider Waite tradition. Um, so maybe it would be helpful for folks if I looked for symbols that were common across a few of my tarot decks um, and just brought a few examples and talked about those. I think that's probably what I'm going to do. It might be a little bit more work, but I also feel like it would be really helpful for me to understand my deck that I'm using right now and just in general. Oh my god, the debate is going on right now. Oh gosh, that's just stressing me out just thinking about our country. Sorry. Woo. All right. So next week, we're going to talk about some tarot symbols. Uh, tomorrow for Druid Craft, I'm going to do a little dried slash preserved floral arrangement as uh, something that's really lovely as a gift for a bunch of different occasions. Uh, so come hang out. I don't I think it'll be a short Druid Craft, but I guess it depends how chatty we're going to be. Um, and then after this, if you're not going to go uh, watch the debate because uh, it's too depressing um, and you're just going to read the highlights tomorrow, I don't know. Oh, gosh, oh, I'm, sp I'm spiraling into a crisis on camera uh, at seven. So in like a little over 30 minutes, I'm going to be on VV Spaceship's channel, twitch.tv slash VV Spaceship, playing a grandma with superpowers. So feel free to tune in for that. Yeah, it is too depressing, Chris. <laughs> gosh. But I had a lovely time for Tarot Tuesday talking about numbers and tarot cards with you all. I hope it was a helpful exercise. Um, I really enjoyed go do I really enjoyed going through the exercise with you. It's honestly it's fun having a buddy while you do the exercise and getting to hear their input and what's going on with their cards and seeing how your cards are the same or different. So uh, I appreciate all of you who tune in. Um, when those of you who tune in when you can, those of you who try to make every Tarot Tuesday, it really means a lot to me. Um, final reminder that my Tarot Zine, Cozy Wisdoms, uh, is going to be released Thursday, October 1st. That's this Thursday at noon Pacific time. There's only 36 copies, so please set a reminder for yourself. I don't want my Rose Buddies to miss out. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, and um, I'll see you all tomorrow.